Debbie here. Gil here from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. In today's video, we're going to cover um, some aspects of the nomadic lifestyle. Things to consider such as, does the state require vehicle registrations? Um, that's a big thing if you have to take your car back there to get it registered. Things like, is there state income tax in the state of, that you choose for your residence? How you go about choosing it? Items such as voting. You know, how do we vote? Can we absentee vote? Those things are what we are covering in the next series of videos. Some of the challenges that we found and what we decided to do and how we did. So I think Deb and I both consider ourselves Texans at heart. I moved to Texas when I was um, in 10th grade. I was in ninth grade. There you go. So, so. For, for all of our working adult lives, both of us have earned an income in Texas. When we had our house, we paid property tax in Texas. We knew how we voted. We knew what the vehicle registration and insurance items were like. Um, and all of these things were very familiar to us, but when we were starting to consider our choice for our state of residency, these things all became in question. We had to go and do some research for other locations. Okay, so one of the things we knew we wanted to do, we both agreed on, is we want to sail towards Florida. Uh, bluer water, warmer weather, easier access points to go for little weekend trips, week trips to the Keys, Bahamas, or even just up and down the Florida coast. So there were a couple of things that we really had to consider. And when you're starting to choose your residency, there's research to be done. And I think from a financial perspective, I am. Yeah, I did research. <laughs> but from a financial perspective, one of the things to really consider was, does the state have a state income tax? So with that comes a decision. And we really had to figure out what state of residency did we want to consider? Um, while we intended to be in Florida, that doesn't have to be your state of residency. So as Deb mentioned before, we are both from Texas. We earned all our income in Texas and we are not used to paying a state income tax. So for us, that was a huge consideration. We didn't want to start forking out additional money, uh, um, a part of our income for a state income tax. There are actually um, technically nine states, let's call it seven for a minute, nine states that actually do not have a state income tax. Those are Alaska, Washington, Wyoming, South Dakota, Texas, Florida, and New Hampshire and Tennessee. And I'm gonna put an asterisk next to New Hampshire and Tennessee because both of those states do, however, charge an income tax on dividend earnings. So if you are intending to finance your cruising lifestyle through investments, you are still gonna pay a, a tax on that. The state of Tennessee claims that they're going to stop doing that by the year 2021, but as of right now, as of 2018, um, all of these states, um, at those first seven are really the ones that are you're not going to have an additional state income tax. So I'll put a little map right up here. It kind of shows in red all of the states that do not have the state income tax. And there's a couple other considerations that we want to have as well. And I'll show you those in just a minute. Okay, keep in mind that these states have other ways that they supplement their um, income or revenue into the state. Um, such as your city and road taxes registration. For example, Texas has one of the highest uh, property taxes of any state in the country. For us, we sold our house, so we actually don't own property in Texas any longer, which, yeah. which meant that wasn't a consideration. But if you do own property, keep that in mind and certainly worth looking at property tax rates if you own property. One of the other things to consider is um, car insurance. With our modified lifestyle, we both still need our vehicles to get around. Uh, Gil needs it for traveling to and from the airport, things like that. So one of the things we had to consider was the different rates in the, the different rates from the different states for uh, our insurance. Of the of the states that do not have a state income tax, New Hampshire is one of the ten cheapest car insurance rates in all of this all of the country. And um, Wyoming is actually one of the highest. So interesting things to consider there. Yeah. The other thing to consider is your vehicle, the registration and the car um, inspections. There are some states that require the cars to be inspected, others that do not. One of the things that Texas started doing was requiring the uh, inspection be done in the county where the car was registered, which was new. And you could not register your car now without having the inspection and stuff done prior to registration. That became a real challenge for us because the ass. Yeah, our vehicles were um, registered in Galveston County, so just south of Houston. Um, where we happen to have the boat right now, that's about six a six hours. and a half hour drive away, um, which means to have our vehicles registered and inspected, we have to do a road trip and we have to take both vehicles, we both have vehicles, we have to take both vehicles there to do it. Our 
our probably not so great choice has been in the past. Gills, my sure. choice. She's a rule follower. I'm a breaker. But, I made the weekend road trips. So one of the things I considered is, you know, when you start figuring out the cost of gas and fuel and the um, likelihood of getting a ticket for not having a inspection, I would choose to let the inspection expire. And if I got a ticket once a year, quite frankly, it was cheaper than the gas it was going to take for me to get back there and have the vehicle inspected. Um, and probably financially over time, that, that decision actually worked in our favor. However, to Deb's point, they've now changed it. You can't register your vehicle without proof of an inspection. So yeah. it's become a bigger issue. And now if you if I were to get stopped, it's not just for an inspection. It would be inspection and registration both. So it has become a burden, um, to say the least, to make that trip back with both vehicles, especially yeah. with the girls. You know, you load up, you drive all the way over there at six hours, you stay the night, you know, and you come back the next day. You spend all day at the DMV and then another six hours in the room. So one of the other things to consider is, does your state require a vehicle inspection? Um, growing up in Texas, I didn't even know that there were states that didn't require this. I just thought they all did. Yeah. So we did a little bit of research in this area too. And this map right here is going to show all of the states that do not require a vehicle I inspection. Um, Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, North and South Dakota, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Michigan, Kentucky and Florida do not require it. So if you think about what Deb and I are considering, that road trip requirement goes away. And registration, almost every state now in the union allows you to um, yeah, do your registrations do online. Mail. It's not always easy to move to Florida when you live on a boat. Um, actually, you know what? I'll go inside and Deb and I will talk a little bit more about what we're trying to accomplish, how we're doing it, and how we get a mailing address and a place of residence uh, from Texas, we're moving it over to Florida. So with all of this research done, for us, Florida made the most sense. And I don't know that I will ever consider myself anything but a Texan, but we decided that we would make our state of residency Florida. We probably still have Kima, Texas as our <laughs> port of call on the back of our boat. And we will proudly fly a Texan flag from the mizzen from time to time. Yes, we will. <laughs> And one of the other things we had to take into consideration was uh, the mail. Prior to this, we had P.O. boxes, which we in Texas, we could every six months put in a forwarding address and change it to wherever we were at. And then we would just get a post office box at the local place where we were staying. Um, but they've now stopped that. The U.S. Postal Service is now requiring you to do a forwarding service where they forward the mail to you, usually about every two weeks, and it's $24 each time they, they do it. It, it might expensive. be 10 pieces of mail, it might be two, and it could be junk mail, it could be half the stuff you throw away and you wouldn't want forwarded to you anyways. So we started looking into mail forwarding services. So narrowed it down to two, there's one based out of Texas uh, called Escapes. That gears more towards people running the RV nomadic lifestyle. And then St. Brennan Isle in Florida, which caters more to the sailboat or boating community. Both of these actually offer similar services. It gives you a physical address to show your state of residency. They all both have mail forwarding services, uh, different plans that, that work a little differently. Um, they both will handle package delivery, so you can have a physical package delivered to you there. Uh, they'll notify you and you can have it forwarded. Um, so they both had very similar services as far as core services. But escapees in Livingston, Texas was really catered more to RVers, as Deb mentioned. They had things like roadside assistance, RV storage, an RV swap program, uh, things like that definitely catered toward RVers. As boaters, we chose the St. Brennan's Isle mail forwarding service. Um, they offer mail forwarding to any port that you go to. You can have documents scanned in you can request mail be sent to you. They'll hold mail for you if you need it. For any um, length of time too, right? They didn't yeah, have a they have a, a length of time. They have a scanning service that they'll actually send you the piece of mail. You have the option of saving it, archiving it, shredding it, or send it. Um, so for the debit cards and stuff, that's nice because it gave us a physical address instead of just a P.O. box. So they do offer that for packaging debit cards, things like that that can't go to a P.O. box service. Um, if you're out and about, they'll help you with ordering boat parts and ha again, have it shipped to any port that you're in, including customs. They'll help make sure it gets through customs if you're out of the country, um, things like that. Yeah, I think the other um, 
the other thing that they offered for boaters that was really important to us oh. was Coast Guard vessel documentation. Yeah. So if you have a, a documented vessel, um, that renews every single year and they sort of act as your agent and they take care of it. You have, you have a little bit of money in an escrow account with them that you keep current and they will actually open the mail, uh, fill out the forms and send it back to make sure that's handled as well as your car boater, registration, boater registra your boat registration and your car registration. Yep. Um, they also help with assistance with making, uh, for, they're based out of Florida. So if you want to make Florida your home residence, they give you all the forms, they'll give you information, they'll tell you where to go. They're very helpful in helping you get registered as and settled as a resident of Florida. Which as you'll see, we ultimately made the decision to be, make Florida <laughs> our residency. And in in this video, we'll show you some of the scenes. I, I will say St. Brandon's Isle has been wonderful about providing and laying out all the details on what you need to do. Deb and I, maybe not so much on following them, so <laughs> we ran into a couple of challenges here and there. Um, and in a little bit in this video, we're going to show you something really interesting that happened um, related to our voter registration. And, and St. Brennan's Isle was wonderful. They actually came up with a great solution to resolve it, not just for us, but for, for all, all our of customers. Them, yeah. So it's pretty cool having an advocate at a service like this St. Brennan's Isle. One of the interesting things are the Clay County Voter Registration Committee, whoever that is, um, knows that this is a business is, is a mail forwarding business and there's not actually people who reside in this particular building as a matter of fact we just went inside and it's you know essentially a large warehouse style building with rows of bins where ultimately mail is put and then scanned in and, and etc so uh you know while while we're not out cruising you know they probably have thousands of customers that are out cruising right now and they are advocating on their behalf so that they can continue to vote uh, and allow them not to have their voter rights removed because this is not a residential location. And this is actually the front of St. Brennan's Island. As you can tell, it, it's not a residential place, right? It's, it's, it's a business service. So this is interesting. When we got our Florida driver's licenses, we said, yes, we want to register to vote. And we received our, you know, we were told we were, we were registering. And then we received this letter. Um, we are not able to process your voter registration ap application due to the absence of a valid residential address. So uh, essentially, this is, um, this is our denial of uh, the ability to vote. In summary, the opinion states that customers of private mail forwarding services who attempt to establish legal residency in a county by filing a declaration of domicile that fails a list, uh, a residential address, uh, is not somebody that gets the ability to vote here. So a little tough for those of us that are um, living a vagabond style lifestyle. So they've partnered with a local RV and marina and essentially have created what they call, what was it called them? So in this partnership, they created something called Club Isle, which I, I suspect is sort of contractually an agreement that allows um, those of us that have this service to also remain a club member, essentially leveraging this property where people can reside in their RVs and their boats. And, and through that agreement, we now have an address that is a, a deemed residential address, um, and it's fine for our voter registration. Uh, so it's kind of neat to have them advocating on the behalf of boaters and full-time RVers and people that travel, which is what this type of a business ultimately, you know, uh, caters to. So if you've been watching our channel for a while, you know Deb and I bought in a camper last year when we were doing a major refit on the other boat. Um, <laughs> what we needed was a different vehicle to tow that. So in July or so, we bought a different vehicle. We bought a used vehicle, uh, but we bought it from a dealership. And, went, and we bought it from a dealership in Louisiana. When we went to um, fill out all the paperwork, you know, tax title and license, uh, we told them that we were residents of Florida. We provided our, our, our residency address there. What that meant was the taxes they collected for the vehicle, they sent to the county in Florida. Yeah. Mid-August, 1st of September, we, um, when they got all the paperwork from from the car dealership and stuff. So we made a trip down to Escamilla County, which is about a three hour trip from us. It's just over the Florida line yeah. from where we have the boat now. So one of the nice things about Florida is you can register your vehicle in any county. It doesn't actually have to be in the county where your residence is. So for us, Escambia County was the closest county to us. Um, and you can get your driver's license done in any driver's license place as well. Yeah, so we, 
we made this trip, Deb had done a bunch of research and uh, as, as she said before, St. Brennan's Isle was real good about providing information on how to go about doing this. Um, we'll put links down in the description to both Escapees and St. Brennan's Isle. Uh, and there's all kinds of how it works and how to become a resident of either Texas or Florida if you're not today. Um, but Deb had done a bunch of that work and that legwork, including one of the things was, didn't you have to get like an affidavit or something from the police department too? Yeah, because we weren't going to have one of the vehicles there personally where they could look at the mileage. We did have to have an affidavit from, and it had to be from a local police agency. Um, and the one that did it here in Louisiana was the state police. And it was a mileage affidavit. They walked into the car, looked at it and verified the mileage, filled out the form and then sent it with us to take to the county. But that was one of the things we had to bring. So when Deb and I made this little road trip, you know, over the Florida state line uh, into Escambia County, which is near Pensacola, Florida, it's the closest one to Louisiana. We, we were able to get quite a bit done. We both got our driver's licenses. Um, and when we got our driver's licenses, we used our address that is our mail forwarding address, right? So we'll, we'll talk about that more later. It's 411 Walnut. I know that sounds like personal information, but if anybody's a customer of St. Brandon's Isle, your address is 411 uh -huh. Walnut Street, uh, Green Cove Springs, Florida. Um, so we were both able to get our driver's licenses and that, and this is interesting, that was the address we put on the, on the driver's Our's license. license yeah. We were also able to register our Hyundai. Um, that was the one Deb got the affidavit on. Um, we turned out we were not able to register the Armada. And this is interesting and I never even thought about this, but we went to Escambia County. When we bought the vehicle, they collected the taxes and they mailed the check to Clay County. That's a different county. Those people want their money. The vehicle had to be registered there. So we didn't get the Armada done. More on that a little bit later in the, vi in the video because we had to fly to St. Augustine, See. drive to Clay County's DMV or tax office, and do the Armada uh, at a later date there. Um, but when we went to Escambia, we got our driver's license, the Hyundai done, we were able to get the dinghy registered, the dinghy trailer, and also the Gulf Star sailboat. Yep. Um, we chose Which, not to do the Formosa, right? Well, the Formosa is, um, we're in the process of getting the documentation on the Formosa. We don't have it from the Coast Guard. It's about a six month waiting period for the documentation. Specifically the Coast Guard vessel documentation. Yes, so we did not get that done um, but once we get the documentation, then we can take it in. Otherwise, if we would have done it in Florida, we would have been forced to have to do a title for it, which would have basically voided all of the stuff we did for the documentation for the vessel, um, for the Dream Chaser. So one of the things that was nice about Florida is the uh, Last Affair is considered an antique classic because it's a 1978 and anything over 25 years, they give you that discount on the registration. So. It was $38 to register, which was substantially cheaper than what we were paying in Texas. So that part was really nice. So that's good. I guess we're going to have two classic sailboats since they're both 1978. We'll save yeah. a few more bucks. Yeah. We are here at the Clay County Tax Assessor's Office and we actually, at this point, finally got all of our vehicles registered in the state of Florida. All right, so now that we just left Clay County Tax Office, we are actually heading over to the mail forwarding service. We use St. Brennan's Isle and, um, and I was sitting in the car searching for their address and then Deb said, well, why don't you just put in our address, the mail forwarding service, don't you think they're at 411 Walnut? Duh. Clearly they, clearly they are. So that's where we're headed. So we're on Walnut Street in Green Cove Springs. We're looking for 411. I saw 409. I saw 413. I didn't see 411. So this will be interesting. Let's see where it is. Hey, baby, let's talk about the address. Was it at 411 Walnut? No. <laughs> it was not. And had I looked it up, I would have absolutely found 411 Walnut. We still wouldn't have a game right, here. Exactly. <laughs> It says on the window, 411 Walnut, but their other address, but their physical address is a different office. So, we're going there now. So, 
We now have a couple of more things we have to fill out. We needed to, to officially declare ourselves as Florida residents. Um, and we need to do that through a specific form. And if, since we're here in town, we can drop it off at the, uh, the clerk of records at the county uh, seat here, as opposed to, you know, going back to wherever we are and then having it notarized and mailed in. So we're going to go over there and, and complete that as well. All right. So the next step is we have to declare our Florida domicile. And we have to do that at the County of Records records room for Clay County. We could have notarized this and mailed it in, but since we're in town, we figured this made more sense. Well, it turns out that wasn't the right spot. We just went to the sheriff's office, not the actual courthouse. They're in the same building, just on the other side of it. Um, so we asked the sheriff guy at the front desk for the records room, and he directed us to the records room. And the look on the woman's face was certainly one of a bit surprised. I'm sure it's because when we said records, she's looking for like our arrest record or something like that or a ticket. So anyway, she realized we were in the wrong spot and sent us to the courthouse. So we are now heading that way. I'd love to say this process is easy. It's not. It's not been hard. It's been a little tedious. Deb used a good word with that. I think tedious. And chances are we probably got all the information we were we needed if we'd have read it all really well, which we didn't. Um, so. But the good, it, yeah, it hasn't been horrible, so we think we're done, and after this step, I think it's drinks on the beach. Now into the courthouse. Well, I think we're in the right spot. We have the clerk of the circuit court recording department. That was relatively painless. What are we, sweetie? We're Florida residents now! <laughs> Officially, yay! Yeah. I no longer feel like a squatter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. Drinks on the beach. Since we're done with our permanent address stuff, we decided to come on over to St. Augustine and check out historic downtown St. Augustine. It's pretty cool, so we're going to take a look around in here. Deb's window shopping, and she likes that stuff, that big dragon head. Pretty cool little area down here in historic St. Augustine. We're looking for a place for dinner. Just leaving the place we went for dinner, and I like this sidewalk. You would think that this is pebbles, but nope. Upon further inspection, yep, all corks. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, it was a whirlwind trip, but it is official. We got everything done and taken care of, and had a nice relaxing Ooh. evening in St. Augustine. So, we're Florida residents. Yay! <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do us a favor. Go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Yeah, give it a thumbs up. Bye, y'all. Bye, everybody. Bye.